I'm just sick of the left and the media and the professional hate finders using the word Nazi to demonize anyone on the right. What do you think? Well, it's shorthand for bad person. So I don't know that it necessarily convinces anyone who doesn't already dislike Donald Trump, but it is effective in making it harder to support him publicly, especially because so much of the media agree with what the left is telling the public. They are, in fact, the vehicle and the authors, in many cases, of, of many of these negative messages. So the word Nazi has been cheapened to the point where even Jewish organizations no longer complain when someone misuses an analogy to the Holocaust. When Joe Biden compared Donald Trump to Joseph Goebbels, the Nazi propaganda minister who was Hitler's right-hand man and chief anti-Semite, nobody complained. The Anti-Defamation League offered a weak statement several days later, but they didn't mention Biden by name. In contrast, when Donald Trump was asked to denounce white supremacists at the first presidential debate, and he did so, they said he didn't do so strongly enough, and they circulated a petition to get Jewish organizations to oppose Donald Trump. Now, they watered it down significantly after we blew the lid off it, when we got a leak from someone who was given the petition, and they had to water it down. They removed the name Trump from the petition, but they retained the substance. Hmm. There is a real kind of self-destruction going on among Jewish institutions that have been unwilling to stand up against this sort of desecration of the Holocaust because so many of them are owned essentially by the Democratic Party that they understand the task for them is not to protect the community. The task for them is to try to push for a change in administration without risking their tax exempt status as apolitical organizations. I find it very frustrating, and I see it in Canada, too, to a lesser extent. I mean, the ADL, which stands for the Anti-Defamation League, we have sort of a branch of that in Canada, but it's more independent. The ADL is actually run by a former senior Obama aide. So I don't think they're even pretending to be nonpartisan. Up here in Canada, about a decade ago, I was actually on the board of our version of APAC. It was called... Uh, the Canada-Israel Committee, and it morphed into other things. And there was at least an attempt to have people of the conservative and the liberal and even other stripes on it just to avoid the group think and in the, in, the, in the knowledge that, you know, there are changes in party and uh, the opposition today may be in government next time and it's a good idea to have all parties sympathetic to Israel and fighting against anti-Semitism. I find it odd that so much of the official Jewish establishment, or at least the so-called anti-Semitic anti establishment, is on one side. You'd think they would want to have friends in all parties and make this an issue about which there is no partisan disagreement. So it's important to understand that the money in politics right now is largely on the left. The reason so much of what is happening, which seems unsustainable if it were to support itself from its own fundraising uh, continues to occur is because there are millions and millions of dollars pouring in to the budgets of far left-wing organizations, pouring into the coffers of far left-wing candidates who would have no chance in an ordinary time. The money is on the left, and these organizations go where the money goes, not, and I'm, let me just say this as a Jew, not because they're Jewish organizations, because all organizations are doing the same thing. And it is part of what might be called the racism industry. The, that's another aspect to this, where organizations like the ADL have to hype the dangers of white supremacy so they can cough up uh, or, or get donors to cough up the money to keep these organizations going in an age where actually the need for an ADL is less than it's ever been before. Jews are widely accepted in society. Jews are very prominent within the president's own family, even though he's very out, out about his Christianity. This is an era where Jews have never enjoyed wider acceptance within American society. And so this is a problem for the ADL. American society is also more tolerant in general toward all minorities, blacks, immigrants, gays, and what have you. So the ADL has to manufacture this crisis to some extent. That's why when there were 200 hoax bomb threats back in 2017, the ADL still included 
the hoaxes in their annual statistics of anti-Semitic attacks, even though they were fake. And the ADL uses those annual reports to go to donors and members of the public asking for money. And other organizations work the same way, not just in the Jewish community, in the black community, particularly also uh, Catholic community. The Southern Poverty Law Center works the same way. There's an interest financially in hyping the danger of these threats. That's an excerpt from my daily show, The Ezra Levant Show. Every day I do a monologue on the news of the day, then I interview an interesting guest, and then I read my hate mail. You gotta subscribe. Go to rebelnews.com.